What's going on traders? Welcome back to Bangkok in Thailand. Today I'm going to go back on a series I began a long time ago about brokers. I had this idea to do reviews of different brokers in the past and I want to share with you the, the brokers I use, why I use them and kind of how they compare a little bit as well. I did a few reviews, I didn't do a lot of them and today I think it's time to go back and do more reviews of brokers. Let's talk about Pepperstone. So I've explained the purpose of this series on brokers to be able to kind of look at different brokers, how they do things, what they have different and help you make a better choice about the broker you use in trading. I want you to be able to pick the right one for you because brokers will vary quite a bit sometimes and there's no right or perfect broker. There's a broker for your trading style, not one that fits everyone of course. So Pepperstone is a broker I've not been using for very long, about maybe three to six months now on a partial basis, not fully only this broker. And the reason is they were not available for Canada before. So I could use them and sign up with them only when I had an address in Thailand because they accept people from Thailand, of course. But they have some restrictions about Canada for sure and some other countries, the US. So not anyone can trade with them. Before we go into the review, if you want to see more videos of brokers and these reviews like this or just videos about trading in general, subscribe to the channel. I publish videos like this every single day to keep you inspired, keep you motivated, keep you learning the right things to help you build the right skills so you can become a full-time trader and get more freedom in life. If you don't want to miss out, make sure you subscribe and click the bell as well to be notified of future videos. Let's talk about the platform, something that I find quite boring between some brokers these days because they all have the same platforms. So Pepperstone uses MT4, MT5 and CTrader. Now I believe these have their own platform a few years back, they don't have their own platform now. These are the only platform you can use to trade with them. Now, it's a pretty good choice. MT4 is good for people who use MT4. MT5 is more modern, of course, a little bit better. Uh, some people complain they don't like it, which is fair, but it's definitely a good platform. And CTrader is something that I didn't really use much in the past, but some people love it and some people hate it too. So you have pretty much everything. You have like all possibilities there, which is pretty good. I simply hope myself they're hoping to integrate with TradingView. Not done yet, when I'll see it I'll be pretty happy. But it would be really cool if Pepperstone implements with TradingView so you can place trades on TradingView. I think that would be awesome. At the moment the only broker I use doing that is Rwanda. But it would be really cool to see other brokers doing it of course. Now the second thing I want to talk about is leverage and money management. Now these rules will affect and in the recent years there's been a lot of brokers doing different things and having to reduce the leverage based on which client they accept. The most you'll see is going to be like 50 to 1 for the US, same for Australia. Canada can vary. Now with Pepperstone, because I'm in Thailand, I was able to get up to 1 to 500 leverage, which is really high and I won't recommend using that ever, but I was able to get it anyway. So it's going to vary based on where you are, of course, and there's some rules behind that. It's not the brokers saying they want to put leverage, it's because there's some regulations uh, preventing them from using X leverage, so they have limits there. Uh, probably if you're going to be in Australia, you can use 1 to 50 and in other countries and you have a pretty big option so that's pretty good pretty much in the top you can get but again it depends on the region that you are located in and trading from now in terms of withdrawals and deposits i found that deposits here were really simple they have a ton of option in thailand again this will vary based on where you are located you can even connect your bank you can go online and transfer right away it's going to be an instant transfer which is really cool they have some options too with PayPal, they have some options with uh, normal bank transfer, credit card, debit cards. That works fine, it's very easy to fund your account. When it comes to withdrawing money though, I found, I'm not sure if that's the only one who does that, but they have a $20 fee when you withdraw to a bank account. That's not a variable fee based on how much capital you withdraw, that's based on a fixed fee. So if you withdraw $1,000, it's going to be $20, if you withdraw $10,000, it's going to be $20 anyway. So they have this fixed fee when you withdraw from a bank account. And again, it has to be, of course, in the name, in your name, you have to provide proof of that bank account. Or it has to be the same account where you put money in your trading account from. So you couldn't, like, let's say, send money to someone else. You can only use the bank account with your own name. Uh, same thing goes with PayPal. If you have a PayPal account and you put money in your account, you're going to have to withdraw it from the same PayPal account if you choose PayPal. This is just regular rules from brokers. And they use this to prevent fraud, of course. You just have to be aware of it. And once you're aware, then things usually go pretty fun after that. But be aware there is a fee to withdraw from a bank account, a international transfer. I believe from what they say on the website, if you are in Australia, there will be no fee for withdrawing to your bank account. But if you are abroad, like in Thailand or any place else, you have to pay a $20 fee for every withdrawal you make. Now, it's not a big deal. It can be something that adds up pretty fast if you do frequent withdrawals, of course. That fee doesn't apply to PayPal or I believe other debit cards. Now, in terms of spreads and commissions, this is pretty much the reason why I opened an account for Pepperstone in the first place because they have a much lower spread than other brokers I'm using, especially Oenda. 
I'll put here on the screen the difference between Oanda spread and Pepperstone spread. You will see Oanda, a broker that doesn't have a very low spread usually. It's a pretty normal to high spread on, in general. And they have a spread of 1.3 pips on your USD at the moment. Now they have a light spread that they show on the website. Pepperstone doesn't show light spread, they show average spread on the website. So that can be a big difference. But so this is 1.3 pips on Oanda. I've seen go to sometimes 1.8, 1.9 as well. Compared to Pepperstone, which you have a 1.16 on a regular account. And if you want to choose a commission based account, so they call it the regular account, where you pay commission for, for every trade, uh, more than that, if you want to put an account with that, they have a special offer, which I'll explain to you a little bit later. You pay commission, you have this much lower spread, 0.16 pip, which is much better, of course. That is a good thing. Now, compared to Oanda, they make their account much more easily accessible on Pepperstone, the Razor account. So anyone can open a Razor account. If you go on Oanda, it's pretty much hidden, no one knows about it much. You gotta be able to put in a lot of money to be able to open that commission-based account where you pay a smaller spread. Something to think about here, uh, something that makes a pretty big difference there, if you wanna open an account with some of these brokers. So what Pepperstone here has that is special is that they have a much lower spread than other brokers. Not like crazy low compared to other brokers, but fairly decent. And the good thing, the much better thing of course, is that their execution is a lot faster. They claim to have faster than 30 millisecond execution, which is pretty fast. I've also heard from other big traders that I talked to that they like Pepperstone for that fast execution. When you trade a really, really big amount, if you trade like professionally or with really large capital, if you are funded, it makes a difference on how you get executed, of course. So that can be a big thing, especially if you scalp or you trade all time frames. So let's say if you want to open an account with a regulated broker that you can trust, that's going to have a lot of regulations around, so that your money stays safe. I think this would be a good option because they have a really, really fast execution as well. And if you care about the low spread, that could be a really good thing as well. The last thing I want to cover here in this review is the customer service and the member interface on the website. A few things you have to note. So the customer service, they have a chat, which is really cool. You can chat with them anytime, 24 hours a day, five days a week. And that is a good thing. I've had a mixed feeling with the people I talked to on the customer service before. There seems to be some, some good things or some bad things. Sometimes things get solved really fast. Sometimes it takes more time. I had a pretty tough time opening my account. They had some bug on the website, which could be caused by my browser or by them. I'm not exactly sure how that worked out. But I've had some issues there, which uh, I was able to solve with the customer service. That was a good thing. But in general, their online platform is also pretty good. Easier than Wanda to use and open your account, in my opinion. Again, that could depend on what you prefer and, and what kind of design you like most. But for me, that was pretty easy to use. They don't have any issues there, I feel. The only issue I have, which I want to mention here because I want to be transparent, is the fact that I opened first a demo account with them and then they ended up closing the demo account after 30 days I think because usually the demo account only lasts for 30 days. The support were able to re-put it back in place for me because I was doing some testing on the side of my live account of course. So they put it back up but the account wouldn't appear anywhere on my platform. So if I want to like put it in a new platform, I don't have the, the number, I don't have anything of that sort. I can see the stats of that account which is kind of not that good because you don't have access to the account. But the account still works out which is kind of really strange, they cannot put it back online but it still works in the background, which is kind of weird. So I can play straight in the account for my testing, but I cannot see the result on the person's website or anything of the sort. So small issue there, I feel it's not a big thing. It's something that is easily solvable, but you gotta be aware that they might have some issues. Just contact the customer support if you have any issues with them. Definitely helps to have the customer service and especially chat on the website. If you want to sign up with Pepperstone, they put together a special offer for you guys watching my channel here on YouTube. You'll be able to open an account with them using the link below in the description and get a free five-part intermediate course of trading. It covers different things like strategies, psychologies, and a bunch of other topics as well. If it's available in your country, you'll also get a reduced commission with that link below. So you can get a reduced commission for your trade, so you don't have to pay the whole commission or get the full spread on your account. You can reduce that by quite a bit. And of course, you'll be getting that fast execution of faster than 30 milliseconds for your trades, which is pretty cool. So link below for that if you want to check it out. If you have any question about the platform, about Pepperson in general, anything I didn't cover here in the review, let me know in the comment below. I want to hear your thoughts, of course. Here are a few comments for past you. I appreciate you guys leaving comments as always in the comment section. And I will catch you back here in Bangkok or somewhere else tomorrow. Ciao.